Hello and welcome to Maths with me, Mike. In this video, we're going to look at some of the uses of the basic formulae of trigonometry. Now, in my previous video, I introduced the formulae and I used a Greek letter theta, which is like a circle with a line through it. Some other people use the letter x, so you'd have instead of sine theta, you might have sine x, and that's okay, it doesn't matter. Some people even use the Greek letter of alpha. And that's fine, it doesn't matter. I've used theta for these videos because that's how I was taught at school and I think it kind of helps you to understand some of the more complex trigonometry when you finally move on to it. So for this video we're going to begin with the formulae. Let's write the formulae down. That's our so ka to So looking at an example now, let's say here is our triangle. There's the right angle. Let's say this is going to be 30 degrees, okay? And then the hypotenuse I'm going to say is 15 centimetres and we're going to work out this side here, okay? The first thing we always do is we label the sides of the triangle. So here's the right angle and opposite the right angle is our hypotenuse and then here's the angle, opposite the angle is of course the opposite. Now when we're using these trigonometric formulas we are always looking for three things. We're always looking for an angle and two sides. So here is an angle that we know, so that's great, we're going to be working with one of these formulae. We know the hypotenuse and so because of that we're not going to use tan. Tan doesn't have hypotenuse in its formula so we're going to ignore that one. But we need the opposite, because that's the one we're trying to work out. So we need an angle, we need opposite, and we need hypotenuse. Well the one that uses the opposite and the hypotenuse is this one, sine. So this is the formula we're going to use, and we go through it in a very logical way. And we start with the formula itself. Sine of the angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Always start by stating the formula. Then start putting things in. Sine of the angle, well our angle is 30 degrees, so sine of 30 is equal to the opposite, which we don't know, question mark, or the letter x if you're trying to find x, or whatever it's labelled as, divided by 15, because that's our hypotenuse, and that's where it goes in the formula. And so we use that. Now we've got to do a bit of rearranging. If it's the bottom of the fraction on this side, we're going to multiply up, so 15 times sine 30 is going to be the thing that we need to find. And then you use a calculator and you type in 15 times sine 30. Some calculators like to put brackets around here, if that's the case make sure you put a closed bracket at the end as well, and you type that into your calculator and you will find that the side that we need to find is 7.5 centimetres. So you start with the formula, you put the values in that you know, you do any rearranging you need to do, and you end with the answer. And I like to double underline it. And that's how we'd work it out. Let's try another one. Let's do a slightly different triangle. I'll use this angle here, 65 degrees, and I'm going to label that side X. Now we need to find it out. The first thing we're going to do is label the sides. Here's our right angle, opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. Here's the angle that we're going to use. Opposite the angle that we're going to use is the opposite. And next to the angle we're going to use is the adjacent. Now this one, we've got an angle of course, that's great, we're going to use one of the formulae. We've got a hypotenuse of 23, so again that rules out the tangent one because that's opposite and adjacent doesn't have the hypotenuse in, and we need the adjacent this time. And the one with the adjacent of what's left is this one, cos. So that's the one we're going to use. So let's go through it again. Start with the formula. Cos of the angle is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay? And so we now put the values in. The angle we're going to use is 65, so cos of 65 is the adjacent side, which is x, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 23. Again, rearranging, 
23 times cos 65 is x that we're trying to find. So x equals type this into your calculator. Notice at this point, all the way down here, I have not used the calculator at all. We get to the final stage, and now I use the calculator. And I'm going to use my calculator to find it out. So I'm going to do 23 times cos 65. And you should end up with an answer of 9.72 centimetres. Work it out for yourself, make sure that that's correct. The other thing you need to be aware of is that on your calculator, you've got different modes. You need to make sure that you are in degrees mode, or deg, sometimes just represented by a little d at the top there of your calculator, and not radians, rad, or a little r. Radians you come to if you are using pi and other things like that and you're doing much more advanced mathematics. If you're using degrees, which is what I've done, 30 degrees, 65 degrees, you need to make sure you're in degrees mode, otherwise all your answers are going to be wrong. So be aware of that. So we've done an example with sine and one with cos. We might as well do one with tan. So let's draw another triangle. There's my right angle, 25 degrees, 43 millimeters. So the first thing we're gonna do is label the sides, okay? So here's our right angle. Opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. I'm gonna put letter X here. That's all we're gonna find. Should have thought of that earlier. So opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. And here's the angle that we're gonna use. Opposite the angle we're gonna use is the opposite. And next to the angle we're gonna use is the adjacent. And so we're gonna use an angle. We're gonna need the opposite. And we're going to use the adjacent. Okay, which formula has the opposite and the adjacent in? It's the tan one. So let's start with the formula. Tan of the angle is the opposite over the adjacent. Excellent. Tan of the angle, the angle is 25 degrees. So tan 25 is the opposite side, which is x, divided by the adjacent side, which here is 43. Bit of rearranging now, bringing 43 up to this side. 43 tan 25. Notice how I don't really need to put the times in here, okay? It is 43 times tan 25, but just like with algebra, where 3 times x can just be written as 3x, the same with this. 43 times tan 25 can just be written as 43 tan 25. It's this number here that is having the tan function done to it, not the one before it. That's 43 times by the tan there. Okay, and that leaves me with the x. Okay, so our final answer is gonna be x equals, pick up your calculator, give it a go, and see what you get. So 43 times tan 25, I get an answer of 20.05, and of course the units here are gonna be the units here, millimeters. Okay, if you want to be really specific, you should also put that that's to two decimal places. And that way you would be guaranteed full marks in an exam. Now so far, we've had some examples, but in each example, the length that we're trying to find is on the top of the fraction, meaning we've just got one rearranging step to do, bringing the bottom number up here. Now we're gonna look at when it's slightly different, okay? And I'm actually gonna keep that there for the moment so that we can compare with this method to how the next method is. To avoid confusion, I'm gonna use green and red for this example. Let's draw a triangle, and I'm gonna put an angle in here, 35 degrees, and I'm gonna give you this side of 28 centimeters. First things first, let's label the sides. Here's the right angle, opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. Here's the angle we're gonna use, opposite the angle is the opposite, and next to the angle is the adjacent, okay? We're looking for a formula that uses the hypotenuse and the adjacent. How do we know? Well, the opposite side, I'm not interested in working out and I'm not given any value for it. The hypotenuse, I need to work out, so that has to be my formula because I'm trying to find it. And the adjacent side, I am given the value of. And because I'm given the value of it, that's gonna help me in my formula, in my calculations. So I need those two sides. 
The opposite, I'm not interested in at all. Let's leave it out. So which formula has the adjacent and the hypotenuse? Again, it's the cos one. So let's write out the formula. Cos theta equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Let's put the values in that we know. Cos of the angle, well the angle is 35 degrees, equals the adjacent, which is 28, divided by the hypotenuse, which is x. Now we're going to do a step similar to what we did earlier. The number on the bottom of the fraction, we can multiply up to the other side to bring it up to 43 times by tan 25. So we're going to do the same here. The x we're going to bring up. So we're going to have x times by cos 35 equals 28. Similar to what we've got here, except now x isn't on its own. And in order to work it out, I need x on its own. So because I've brought the x up, I'm just going to take this cos 35 and bring it back underneath the 28. x equals 28 divided by cos 35. And now I can work with that. Again, pick up your calculator, pop that in, see what you get. 28 divided by cos 35 should get you an answer of 34.18 and the units are centimetres and it's to two decimal places double and line and we're there now you don't have to do it to two decimal places if the question says to one decimal place give it to one decimal place but I find that a decent level of accuracy is to two decimal places and that can often help if you've got a bigger question that requires a bit more working, then you have more decimal places, you keep more accuracy in your answer until you get to your final answer. It's quite useful to do that. The final bit that might need some explanation is when you're needing to work out the angle, because that requires a little bit of rejigging too. So let's have an example. 27 centimetres, 41 centimetres. Again, as with any triangle, label the sides. Here's the right angle. Opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. Okay, this is the angle that we're trying to work with, so if that's the angle we're working with, then this one is opposite the angle, so that's the opposite, and this one is next to, or adjacent, to the angle that we're trying to work with. Okay, so this time here is our unknown, and with all of these things you'll realise they all have an angle in, and they all have two sides. Three things to work with, an angle and two sides. There will be one of those things that you need to work out in order for it to work properly. So in the previous examples, it's been one of the two sides. In this example, it's the angle. And because it's the angle that we're trying to find out, we therefore need to know what the two sides are in order to work out the angle. So here we are trying to find a formula with two sides that we know. Well, the two sides that we know are the opposite and the adjacent. And because it's the opposite and the adjacent, we're going to use the tan formula. So we're going to start with that tan. Theta is the opposite over the adjacent. And by writing the formula, we're showing that we know which one we need to work with. Tan theta, well theta is what we're trying to find out. The opposite side, remember you get these in the right order, the opposite one goes on top, so 27 goes on top of the fraction, and the adjacent, the 41, goes on the bottom of the fraction. Now we need to work out how to undo this tan, because this theta isn't just theta, it's had a tan being done to it. Remembering that tan, sine, cos and tan are all functions. So this theta, this angle, has had a function done to it in order to get this ratio, this fraction. So we need to undo the tan. And to undo a tan, it's very simple. If you look on your calculator, normally just above the tan button, you'll see the inverse of tan, the opposite of tan, which is tan to a minus one. And that's what we're gonna use. So here, theta, what we're trying to find is tan to the minus one, the inverse of tan of, because remember, sine, cos, and tan have to have an angle with them, so tan to the minus one has to have something with it as well. And that's just this fraction, tan to the minus 1 of 27 over 41. And this is what we need to put into our calculator. If you've got a fancy calculator that shows you the display, make sure your display looks like that. And then you'll get the right answer when you press the equal sign. So theta equals, pick up your calculator. So we're going to do tan to the minus 1. Most calculators you need to use shift 
or the second function in some calculators to make sure you get tan minus 1. You can't just type in a power of minus 1, it doesn't work like that. You have to use the inverse tan function. Tan to the minus 1, use brackets if you need to. 27 divided by 41, close the brackets if you need to, and you should get an answer of 33.37. 33.37, lots of threes in that. And it's an angle, so the units are going to be degrees. Again, to two decimal places, double underline, and there you go. Doesn't just work for the tan one, cos has got an inverse as well of cos to the minus one, and we've got a sine to the minus one as well. If you look on your calculator, they're all there. So whatever it is we're working with, that's how you need to go through it. And these are the steps. And it's not a lot of working, and you only need to pick up your calculator right at the end. And if you remember that, trigonometry, or the basics of trigonometry, become really quite easy, and it's just a simple method you need to work through in order to get the answer. So you start with your formula, you put the values into the formula, you then think, what rearranging do I need to do? Where is the unknown? If the unknown is the angle, you need to do an inverse along the line. If the, if the unknown is on the top of the fraction, you just need to move the bottom number up to here. And if the unknown is on the bottom of the fraction, you'll just need to move that number up and move that one down, and then you get there. So you do a bit of rearranging in the middle, and you get the answer, and it's only right at the end where you actually need to pick up your calculator to do a bit of work. As usual, I'll give you 20 questions for you to practice with. There are 10 here at the moment. For the first five, all you need to do is label the sines. I've shown you which angle is labeled theta, so just label the sides. For the next five, questions six to 10, all you need to do is find the value of the length marked x. Here are questions 11 to 20. For questions 11 to 15, again, find the value of the side marked x. And for questions 16 to 20, find the value of the angle marked with the Greek letter theta. With these questions, it's probably helpful to draw the diagrams on your own piece of paper so that it's easier for you to work with. As usual, I've used red for the question numbers and blue for the questions themselves. Give them a go and the answers will be in my next video.